I hate New Year's resolutions. Now that being said, I also kind of love them. It's a chance to kind of wipe the past away and start over, to get a clean slate, to ignore all the mistakes you've had in the past, and take some time to reflect on what you want your life to be, what your goals are, and what the path is to get closer to those goals and improve your life, simplify things, and try to have more energy and more freedom in the coming year. But why I really hate New Year's resolutions is because they start on New Year's. Same reason I hate diets. You don't start a diet on Monday, you don't start after the holidays, you don't start whenever. If you want to change something in your life, you should start it right now. Best time was last week, but the next best time is not tomorrow, it's not Monday, it's right now. And these are some habits that I have implemented into my own life over the past couple months that have actually changed my day-to-day -day life in a positive way to simplify things or just make my life a little bit better. And I wanted to share some of these with you. Taste your coffee. I know this probably sounds kind of stupid, but just tasting my coffee has drastically changed how I've been experiencing my life. One morning a couple months ago, I was sitting there drinking my coffee and reading a book as I do every single morning. And I just kind of like, for whatever reason, realized the taste of the coffee that I was drinking. And it was actually amazing. It was the same thing I've been drinking for like a couple weeks. And that was the first time that I actually noticed what it tasted like. And I looked down at the mug in my hand and I saw the steam escaping from this mug. Something I hadn't taken the time to notice in weeks. And it was honestly, Beautiful. I looked outside and there's a beautiful sunrise that I wasn't paying attention to. And I've been waking up before the sun for like a year now. And how many of those sunrises have I actually watched? I've had a cup of coffee every single day for the past like five years. And how many of those cups of coffee did I actually take the time to enjoy, to experience the flavors? Very, very few. So this idea of tasting this cup of coffee has nothing to do with coffee. It's enjoying the little beautiful things that are in our life already, whether that's sitting there, whether it's looking out the window when you're stuck in traffic or at a stoplight, noticing nature and the people. It's tasting the drink that you're drinking, the food that you're eating without watching TV, without scrolling on your phone, but actually being present in the moment to enjoy little things like an amazing cup of coffee. And I know it seems small and it's not like a wicked hard habit to start because it only takes like three seconds to actually taste what your coffee tastes like to actually look out of the window at a sunrise. But as I got in that practice of doing that first thing every single morning, spending literally five seconds to a minute actually enjoying the things around me, it made me be more conscious of things I'm seeing throughout the day and enjoy the beauty and the stillness and the calm of everyday things that I was doing already, I just wasn't paying attention to. 15 minutes a day. I've been reading a book a week for most of this past year and it has completely uh, changed my mindset and it's really improved my life. Generally, in order to do that, I had to read uh, at least like an hour a day and I was doing audiobooks and other things as well. And I've kind of pared it down a little bit this year, but just consistent and steady learning has really helped me out. And I've actually been using uh, short form, which is really my favorite summary for books. So that even when I'm not reading an entire book, I can still get a lot of the main ideas from actually the sponsor of this video, short form. And short form is actually insanely detailed. Like everything's cross-referenced. It's really in depth. So you can kind of just get the main points or you can really dig into these books without having to spend, you know, 20 hours reading a, a, a book. I've read or listened to dozens of different summaries on short form and currently I'm reading Walden, which I got like halfway through the book and it was just really long, but I'm currently reading the summary instead and just saving myself a bunch of time because I wanted the ideas, but like the writing style just wasn't for me. But they have tons of different categories and almost every nonfiction book you can think of from business, career success, economics, money and finance, motivation. If you want to check them out, you can check out shortform.com slash Gabe and you can get an unlimited free trial plus 20% off your annual membership. Honestly, this is a great addition to your daily routine. You can learn so much stuff over the coming year. Definitely check them out. The 90% rule, but in three separate ways. Number one is that if something is not a 90 plus, out of a scale of one to 10, is this a 90, 95, 98? No, well that means I'm not going to get it. Every piece of clothing that I buy has gotta be a 90 plus. Everything that comes inside of my house, every time I make a purchase, I run it through the scale of is this a 90 plus? Will this be my favorite thing that I would love to wear, that I will use every single day, that I'll use a ton? And if I'm not 100% sure about that, if it's not a heck yes, then it is a no. And the second way is applying it to things that I do. In the four hour work week, Tim Ferriss talked about busyness being a form of laziness with lazy thinking and indiscriminate action. If somebody asks me to do something or an opportunity comes up to start something new, to try something in my life, and it's not a 90 plus, then I'm gonna say no. 
Now, sometimes there are things that we don't want to do, whether it's helping people or just obligations that we have. And this can be tricky and it definitely uh, like offends some people. But if you're constantly doing stuff, you are so incredibly busy that you don't have like five seconds to enjoy a cup of coffee, then you need to start saying no to good things, things that are good so that you can say yes to the things that are amazing, that are life-changing. So you have the opportunity to improve your life. But you only get that if you only say no to 90% of stuff, then you can say yes to that 10% that really matters. It's how you're spending your days align with your goals and with your values. And if it doesn't, see if you can cut it out of your life. Some of it you can't, but a lot of it you can if you're willing to make some sacrifices. And the third way is actually similar to the 80-20 rule, but actually after reading Essentialism and some other books, I realized that things that even though 80-20 is super good, it's closer to 90-10 or 95-5 on there is five to 10% of stuff that incredibly changes your life and the rest of it doesn't even matter. Whether that's with work, there's a few actions that actually matter and checking email and answering phone calls and chatting with people in the office and playing solitaire and all the other crap that we do doesn't really make a big difference. So can we just check email once a week and, and not do the rest of the stuff and spend more time on the things that are actually important? Have a no by month or week or year. And no, I've never seen friends. Actually, that's a, uh, that's a complete lie. I've seen it like four times, but not in the past couple of years. We are currently about halfway through a no spend month. We do this two to three months out of the year where we will not buy anything that is not a necessity. So we get food, obviously, gas, we need like our housing and stuff like that. But anything that is optional, it's not like a necessity to survive in our lives, we will not buy. And it is an amazing experience, especially if you're caught in this cycle of buying things constantly, you're buying things on Amazon, you're impulse buying at the store, you're shopping just for fun. If you set a, for the next 30 days, I'm gonna survive with what I have, you'll be amazed how little your life changes and how much more money you have as a result. Uh, occasionally we've gotten into habit of buying stuff on Amazon and we just keep buying stuff every few days or once a week or something like that. And so taking some time to just uninstall that and not be able to buy anything for a month really helps reset and recalibrate what's important to you. And also I can't stress enough, it, just, it saves you a lot of money. Like we don't even go out to eat. We don't do anything that's not a necessity for an entire month and literally your life doesn't change at all and you realize how little all of that crap that we think about and we spend so much time on and so much money on matters to our day-to-day -day lives. The endowment effect. Understanding this effect really has made an impact on the stuff that I do own and helped me get rid of a bunch of stuff. So the endowment effect says that we value things that we own more than things that we don't own. That's why it is so hard to get rid of all this crap that we own. Even if we don't use it, we forgot we even had it. Where you're going through your closet, you think you like stuff even though you've never worn it once, but you don't wanna get rid of it. So one way that I've been really using this is, uh, like I was decluttering my closet recently, and I looked at some of the shirts in there and I asked myself, if I didn't already own this, would I spend money to buy it? I also realized I had this, which I haven't worn in like a year because it's too small, but I'm in New England and it's winter and I only have one flannel, so I thought I'd bring it out. But anyways, I realized that a bunch of the stuff in there, I wouldn't actually spend money to buy again. And that made it pretty clear that I should get rid of those things. So it's kind of reframing the stuff that you own. This can help you realize if it's just this endowment effect or if it's something that actually brings some type of value or joy or ease to your life. Make space. When we think of like space or calm in our lives, we often think of the woods, maybe a tiny home, Instagram, Pinterest, this idea of like calm and cozy and relaxation something that none of us tend to get. So why not make it a habit to actually schedule in some of those times to just have calm and space in your life so that you're not constantly running. And there's so many different ways that we can do this by like building a clutter-free home that's simple and open and clean so that we have space and calm when we're just living our day-to-day -day lives. It's where we spend a lot of our time, but if your house is a wreck, you're constantly gonna feel somewhat stressed. We can also schedule some of these activities into our lives. Scheduling like a hike for every Saturday, going outside during your lunch break and experiencing some calm. Scheduling in as little as one minute just to be bored, to not be on your phone, to not be thinking about anything, but just to have calm in your life. And as you have a few of those glimpses, you can schedule it in more and more and more, but actually taking time aside to do nothing and have some like sanity back into your life is something that has been really, really helpful for me. And I think one of the best tools to do that is to not have your phone with you while you're doing any of those things. Create 
instead of consume. I feel like right now we're all programmed to be consumers. The average person sees about 10,000 ads per day and that just programs us to consume more stuff. It's to buy things to make us feel better. This pill will solve your problems. Consuming more media will let you escape from the problems that you're having in your day-to-day -day life instead of actually facing them. And something that has really helped me is going from this idea of being a consumer to being a creator. I think it's a way more like rewarding lifestyle to know that you're putting something out there that is making a positive impact on other people's lives as opposed to just consuming and consuming and consuming and consuming other people's ideas, their thoughts, their stuff. And there's no problem with a little bit of that, but when that's all that you do, it becomes a little bit of a problem. That's why I love YouTube so much and I know that's not what everybody's gonna do. But when I have these things that I'm learning, instead of just keeping it to myself, I can share it with other people. I can know that I created something today that might have the chance to make one person's life 1% better and that is cool. And for you, it might be creating a physical product or a digital product or a piece of media or sharing your thoughts with friends or writing or drawing. But what are you putting out into the world to try to make it a better place instead of just consuming and focusing and just trying to make yourself feel better? It's a life-changing mindset, a life-changing habit to not keep focusing on yourself, but to focus on how you can improve the world. And if you wanna improve my world, you can subscribe once I hit half a million subscribers. I'll be able to get a Tesla and I'm gonna try to find a way to get it for close to free. So if you wanna see that, subscribe and uh, I'll see you next week.